Hello, good day everyone. My name is Irfan Lag. Welcome to Hi-Fi Tech Group. We will be discussing overlay tunnel. This is uh, part of CCNP 350-401. These topics are part of uh, CCI course as well. So I'll suggest to go through these videos in detail. So until now, we have discussed the tunnels, GRE tunnel and IPsec tunnel. So GRE tunnel, it does not have security but IPsec, it have security. But if we talk about the multicast traffic, then GRE tunnel, it support, but IPsec tunnel, it does not support multicast traffic. So we combine GRE tunnel and IPsec to transport multicast traffic with security in it. Okay, now today session is about Cisco LISP location ID separation protocol. Let's quickly go to the LISP. So uh, LISP, it's a mapping protocol. So the purpose for LISP is to reduce the routing table size as we discussed earlier for our public internet. Its size is around, uh, around 1 million routes in the PGP routing table of our internet. So 1 million routes are too much, even for powerful router to process it. So uh, we don't want to increase this uh, size to 5 million. If the routing table size, if it go to 5 million, it would be really very difficult even for the backbone router to process it. Then really the, the tier one, tier two, tier three ISPs, they need to upgrade their router and they need to invest millions of, dollars okay let me put this way millions of dollars to upgrade their backbone to support you know uh, more routes so uh, so the routing table size it's a big thing uh, because routing table size it's equal to the processing power that we require so lisp is a protocol that help to you know keep the routing table size small so in lisp uh, LISP is basically, uh, it is very similar to DNS server, DNS concept or root reflector. So for DNS, let's say, okay, let me show you, I have a screenshot for that as well. So for, for DNS, we send the URL and as a result, we get the IP addresses. In the LISP, we send basically uh, end endpoint IP, and we want where is the router which have this endpoint. So Lisp mapping it tells us that this endpoint belong to this router. So let's go back to our original video. Okay, so here let's say. Uh, we want to make a connectivity between left side one and left side two. So, end ID, okay, one is basically 10, 10, 10. And on the far end, it's 20, 20. Let's say we want to ping. So this device will go to ITR. ITR, uh, it will ask mapping server that I want to go to 2020. 20.20.20.20. 20. 20. 20. 20. ITR will say I want to go to 2020, which router I should go. Then the mapping server, it will say go to 222. Then ITR, it will go to 222, which is this router. And then that's how the packet will go there. So 
mapping server, it do the mapping. EID to R lock. Okay, I'll quickly take you through the uh, different terminologies and then we will revise this example again just to be 100% clear. Uh, mapping server, mapping server, it map the end, uh, EID to R lock. Okay, let's first see what is EID. EID is endpoint ID. So this is the IP of endpoint and R lock router locator, it's the loopback IP of a router. So um, this is endpoint, this is endpoint IP and this is the R lock is the router loopback. And uh, mapping server, it do the mapping of endpoint ID to R lock mapping. So we will give him the endpoint, it will tell us which router. So mapping server do this mapping. ITR is ingress, ingress tunnel router and ETR is egress tunnel router. So these are the common terminologies. So if we want to go from here, from this list right one to list type two, it is very simple. ITR, this request will go to ITR, ITR, don't know 2020. ITR will send this 2020 to mapping server and mapping resolver. It will ask where is this endpoint. So map, mapping resolver actually it resolved. Mapping server it do the mapping. It do uh, it saves R lock and EID and mapping resolver do the search searching mean like control F. So resolution, mapping resolution and mapping server. Mapping server save, mapping resolution search. So now this 2020 IP address, it will go to mapping server. Mapping server will send it back this. And that's how we'll go there and the packet will go down to this one. So uh, in this way, now uh, this device will be able to ping this device. And, uh, and if you check the routing table, routing table for this one, you will not find 20.20.20.20 in the routing table. No, you will not find. This is how we reduce the routing table. So it, it's funny that we are able to perform the ping from here to here. And this IP is not part of the routing table of ITR. Normally, as per our understanding, if we want to reach any route, uh, they, it should have an entry in our routing table or there should be a default route. But uh, for this, uh, in Lisp, the, uh, it does not matter that IP, it should not be part of our routing table. The only requirement is ITR, I mean, the routers, they should be subscribed to the mapping server. So all the devices, they should be subscribed to mapping server. So any one device want to talk to other will go to the mapping server, mapping server will make a communication between them. For example, let's say we have a mapping server and uh, then we have multiple routers connected, let's say there is one PC here that want to communicate to this PC, let's say this is A, this is B. Now we want to make a communication between A and B. So this router, it will, it is subscribed to, basically all of them, they are subscribed to mapping server. So now this router, it will, this router will ask, I want to go to B, which router? 
okay let me just give a name to router let's say this is router y and this is z so router y ask mapping server i want to go to b which server so it will reply go to server z then this router it will basically go to server z which take it down to router b so in so in this way uh, using a mapping server we basically don't have the uh, endpoints as in our routing table so that's how it help us to reduce the routing table size these are some definition endpoint identifier eid r lock is the loopback ip of the router routing locator itr etr ingress tunnel egress tunnel and mapping server it to the mapping it basically save any router when a new endpoint is added it will update the mapping server and then mapping resolver help us if we give our endpoint detail and mapping resolver give us back the corresponding router so this is the control plane as we discussed the mapping server it is like dns server in dns server we send our uh, url and we get the ip address so in itr we send the eid endpoint and it will tell us which router that endpoint belongs to and uh, this is the data plane uh, for uh, lisp so lisp basically use the udp source and destination port there is a standard udp port that tell us that it is a lisp protocol then it have a source lock and destination lock ip so here is the data communication let's say uh, we want to make a communication between list side one and list side two then uh, this itr okay it will go to ms and it will ask i want to go to 10.1.2.2 so itr will go there and ask for 10.1.2.2 for example so ms will tell that the r lock is 100 and then that's how it will go to 100.64.2.2 and then the packet is go down further there And um, here, this is uh, the header for the Lisp. Here uh, again, and and Lisp type one want to communicate to Lisp type two. So in the header, if we look at uh, this source IP is this one, and this destination IP is this one there's another source and destination ip this is source ip this is source r lock ip and this is this destination is the destination r lock ip so so there are two set of source and destination ip this one and this one this is for the endpoints and this is for the r locks so when the traffic go uh, over the public internet so it will be just pointing to the r lock ip which our itr got that r lock ip from the mapping server so so guys that's all about list operation any question you can ask me on my youtube channel please subscribe my youtube channel and click on the bell icon button our next topic would be vxlan that we use in the data center so please uh, watch my next video as well to have uh, an understanding about the VXLAN. I will give a summary in my next uh, lecture as well about the overlay tunnel, just to summarize everything. Thank you very much.